Hey, it's John with Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, we're gonna go over each and every topic that you will see on the TS7 reading section. So this is really just gonna save you a lot of time if you're wondering what's on the test, what do I need to be studying? That's what this video is all about. We're gonna lay it all out for you in one place and make it super easy for you. Now, before we get into it, I wanna make sure that you guys check out the links in the description below. There's a link to our free practice test, our T7 bootcamp, our TS Facebook study group that's got tens of thousands of students, just like yourself who are studying for the TS and sharing their resources and what worked for them and how they got such a high score. So I want you guys to be a part of that community. So check out that link and join the group. And then there's links to our online course and practice test pack and all that good stuff. Uh, so make sure you check that, uh, all of those links out. Now, if you like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of T7 videos coming out that will help you guys pass the test, and I want to make sure that you know as soon as those come out. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. The reading section is going to be 45 questions in 55 minutes. Now, this section is definitely, a lot of people find it pretty challenging, and one of the more challenging parts is that there's a lot of passages. There's a lot of reading to do. Now, they're not short passages. They can be really long. They can be four and five paragraphs. So that makes it uh, pretty difficult. It can also be some short kind of stories and passages, and it's going to be things from like books or magazines, journal excerpts, recipes, maps, things like that. So that's kind of what you can expect on uh, this section. So the first topic that we'll cover is main ideas, topic sentences, and supporting details. Now, a main idea is usually the last sentence of the first paragraph. A summary is usually the first sentence of the last paragraph. A topic sentence is usually always the first sentence of the passage, right up there in the front. It's gonna lay everything out. That would be your topic sentence. And a supporting detail will be in the same paragraph as the topic sentence uh, paragraph. So look for those things and kind of know what the main idea is, topic sentences, supporting details, all that stuff is. Now, what is the main idea of this passage would be a question that you would see. It's like, an, you know, very similar to what you'd see. What's the main idea of the passage? Now, another topic is summarizing text and using text features. So no sequences and instructions. Um, be able to interpret graphics like a diagram, a flow chart, bar graphs, uh, pie charts, things like that. Um, and you'll need to be able to kind of summarize from that information to answer the question, pull out the relevant information so that you can answer that question. Tone, mood, and transition words. This is a topic where you will see questions on the test. So know the tone and the mood. And really the tone is sort of the author's attitude towards the subject. So look for repetitive words that are in the same tone or the same mood. It could be negative or pessimistic or positive or dismissive, uh, but this is gonna be different from the mood, which is more about the reader's attitude. So whether the reader feels sad or scary or kind of a more formal feeling or reflective like a narrative passage, the mood is gonna be more about the reader's reaction or attitude. Now there's the author's purpose and point of view, and you wanna know what the author's purpose and point of view is for a particular passage. So know the types of purpose. This could be to inform or persuade or entertain. Uh, look for clues to determine the point of view. Making an argument is persuasive. They're trying to convince you of something, persuade you of something. Typical question formats that you'll see around the author's purpose and point of view might be things like, why did the author write this passage? Or what does the author want the reader to know about whatever topic or subject? Um, the author wants to conclude that. Uh, what was the author's primary purpose for writing the essay? Or it could be something like uh, the author's reason for writing this piece seems to be teaching or informing or entertaining or whatever it is. But those are the types of questions that you might see. And when it comes to the topics of facts, opinions, and evaluating an argument, you really need to know the difference between facts and opinions. And this isn't just for the TEAS test. We should know this in our day and age of social media, misinformation, all that stuff. Just know the difference between facts and opinions and kind of what really makes a fact a fact and opinion an opinion. Um, now, judgments are not facts. Be able to know if an argument is valid or a poor argument and watch out for assumptions and biases within any particular uh, you know, reading or passage or whatever it is. 
So understanding primary resources, making inferences, drawing conclusions is important to know on the T7. Uh, so it's like knowing your primary resources, your secondary resources, your tertiary resources. Know what those resources are and what the differences are between them and kind of uh, some examples of what a, a primary or secondary resource would be. Um, be able to evaluate credibility within something that you're reading. Um, know the types of sources and references that would be used, so like the date of publication or the author's info or, or their bio, uh, the publisher's info, kind of just the general professionalism of the writing, the text, the passage uh, will help you kind of determine some of these things. You know, types of passages is important. You'll need to know the different types and what makes them different and what's kind of sets them apart. Um, text structures, and genre and theme of different passages. So knowing the different uh, passage types, there are there is narrative, expository, technical, and persuasive. Now for text structure, there are a couple different types that you'll need to be familiar with. Uh, there are sequences, comparing and contrasting, cause and effect, a problem uh, and a solution where you, know, you outline a problem and talk about the solution, uh, and then a descriptive text or a description. And when it comes to genre and theme, there's a couple different types of genres. So there's fiction, uh, that's like stories, novels, romance, mystery, things like that. Nonfiction is gonna be your autobiographies, essays, criticism, reviews, things like that. Now, one tip to kind of help you solve some of these reading passages is that a lot of times when you have four answer options, you're gonna find that they'll have a very realistic answer and a very unrealistic answer. And then there'll be two in the middle. And the two in the middle are likely the right one. So try and focus on the answer that comes directly from the passage. Almost every time the actual information will be in the passage. If it's not in the passage, it's probably not the right answer. So that's kind of just something that you can kind of try and pay attention to. Now they might try and trip you up with something like this and they'll put some information in the passage that's very specific, might have some numbers attached to it and they know that in the common sense real world things might be a little different so you can get tripped up. So you might see something like, just for an example, like a game is played with six players but you know that that particular game can be played with up to eight players. So the choices are like five, six, seven, and eight. Now, it has to be six because that's exactly what the passage said. It didn't say anything about eight, even though you know a lot of times in your own experience it was played with eight players, but it doesn't say eight in the passage. So you got to pay attention to what is actually in the passage. All right, so another tip is that you really need to know the types of passages because this is a pretty common question you know, that you'll see. So knowing if something is like persuasive or argumentative or a technical passage or a narrative passage, uh, is very important. You'll need to know these questions. And a lot of times there's keywords or phrases uh, within these passages. So something like uh, after a few days, not long ago, till next time, on the next occasion, from this point, it's a narrative passage. And you can know from those keywords. So it really helps to kind of have those sort of list of keywords and type of things to look out for so that you know what type of passage it is just based on those keywords. So make a list of those keywords and know them so you can quickly know uh, and use them as an indicator for what type of passage that, you will, uh, that you're that you looking at. So those are all the topics that you'll see on the reading section of the test. The best thing that you can do is really just do as much practice as you can. Uh, practice reading these long passages and getting quicker at them, being able to uh, pull out the relevant information out of those passages, answer the questions. And of course, Smart Edition Academy has you covered with our online course, our practice test packs, our timed practice tests or question banks, all that good stuff will help you on this reading section. So until the next time, we will see you in the next video.